back at Heritage Hip Hop, and we're with two goddesses <laughs> of the art game. And when I say goddess, this is why. You have to live your art, and one actually wears her art. <laughs> and that's dope. Please, introduce yourself from the right to the left. Okay, I am Sire Lambert. I am a fine artist. I paint, I do ceramics, all that stuff. I also, in my hobby, like to draw all my tattoos that are on my body. illustrator, I'm a writer, um, and I think that majorly for me is about changing the world and connecting and helping kids like able kids, kids who were told that they weren't smart. There's a lot of smart kids who don't know that they do this and they see art and they don't understand it's math. So truthfully, you see mathematics and if somebody teaches you that, you have an understanding. And I call this hieroglyphic. So when I was a kid, it didn't look like like draw something like this in the middle of class and it represented whatever the topic was right teach other kids how to do that teach them that they have it in them that this character represents blah 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 and they they sit in class they don't have to look at you they got what you're saying that's something that i think is very powerful and missing we're trying to help kids help people i want to lift up the, the, the bonds of uh, subjugation everything we know everything we are has been given to us by somebody else instead of us finding ourselves again finding love for ourselves i want to change the world that's what i want that's i want to change myself introduce my kids to changing owning their own business being brave enough to go out on your own you give it away to other people well what do it for yourself that's what it means to me. that's what i'm doing and that's deep but before you say anything the next thing may i show everybody your forearms Mine? yeah bacon fish that's why he's their dad <laughs> Don't mess with the daughters, you get knocked out. Alright? Now, let's go. Yeah, see? Yeah, yeah. So let's start once again from the right to the left. Now, the thing about tattoo art is that's living art on skin. How fulfilling is it to see art on skin reflect the creative essence of what you came from? I think it's a story of everybody's life. I honestly do. Um, somebody might look at something and think it's stupid, but they don't know how that pertains to somebody's life. Uh, clearly, this is my grandmother. She's deceased. Shout out to grandma. Yes, shout out to Patricia. This one, my mom's name is, uh, everybody calls her Sunny or Sunshine, and her middle name is Raya Soleil. She stands for Soul is Sun. So I figured these are the most important women in my life. That's why I have a tattoo right there. Shout out to the sun. Yes, on my chest. Uh, I'm all about chakras and energies and everything, so that's why I have this one. It's all about flow. It's all about the energy. So your third eye dominant? Yep. Ooh, yeah, real quick. <laughs> what about you? Your art is more on paper. Yeah. And you drew the art with the, the woman like she's a Muslim with the hijab. Uh -huh. That's a spectacular piece of art. And the reason why is not the colors, is because the art is alive. How do you capture life in your art? By representation, the things that matter to you, that when you put it on paper, it like and you can spread it out and you can it can speak to you like art is worth uh, like a picture is worth a thousand words and it can say more than even words can say for itself just by looking at stuff that's why art is so prominent and everywhere because it speaks for itself and i just feel like it makes a change to see it up there and see it alive like that you're a family of artists but your art transposes three different genres of life you went through education through inspiration you went through inspiration through living art you went through living art through the movement is skin and growth so that means you're accomplishing life for so many different levels what is the key that make brings all your art together though never lose 
using your individuality. I don't do that work. We work together. I'm like, you know, now there's things that we are trying to produce. And like I said to her, I said to them, all the characters that I create, I'm going to will them to you so that you can go on and do something else and you remember something that you can pass down. That's the point of empowerment. Because you're asking for your kids to do better than you do. My children are better than me as far as art goes. But there was a start. It's a Moses moment is what I call it. When you think about better than yourself, and I'm inspired for better than myself. What is the Moses moment? Is that right there? You, you'll never see what it is that you do. Moses never oh, okay, because he never saw the land of Israel. He just got it in there. Right. Okay, right. you taught me something, sis. Ain't that so? <laughs> That's what I mean. So having that Moses moment is what you have to decide. If you're trying to be, if you're trying to change the system, the system of you has to change. I can't catch up with the system. I can't. But I can give them something so that they can live in peace. Every day getting up and creating something is a joy. How many people go to work every day and get on the grind and hate what they do? Every Everybody. <laughs> why? Because, why? Because, no, no, I can tell you why. No, no, but I'm saying. Shit. <laughs> I get it, but, but it's also now we have a choice. Mm -hmm. what, am I, what am I willing to sacrifice so that I can get to where I want to be? What am I willing to do to get me closer to what it is that I'm trying to accomplish? And you have to ask yourself how uncomfortable I need to be to get to that next step. It's just like, we don't like to get up and work out every day, right? And instant results don't happen when you work out one day. Multiple days put together doing what you love to do gets you the results. That's the change. What am I willing to work out to do? The start for me is this, showing my kids that it is not perfect. My imperfections are the thing that makes me unique. Never lose your uniqueness by giving up your imperfections to somebody else. And that's what I teach them. No, 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 that's perfect because, shout out to the womb. What's up, mom? All right. And that's my ex-wife. I have a fantastic family. That's, that's my ex-wife. So shout out to you. You made it happen. Shout out to you. And as you see, the ladies draw art that is vibrant and that is alive. Yeah, he, um, he brought my last one. I want to ask you this, though. Yeah. While they're in the middle of their transaction, I want to ask you this. What keeps art relevant in a dying world, though? Because it doesn't seem like the world lacks creativity. The world lacks imagination. So what keeps the art alive? Innovation. That's what I said. Not only that, you need to revisit the positive things from the past and replicate those things in a positive way. The world's not dying. <laughs> Instagram, you want to do it? Are you on Instagram? You want to take a picture of that? As y'all see, it's live up here. We selling pictures. The DJ over here while the music playing. Right. We making it happen right here. I love it. I love it. So, for me, it's the fact that we recognize that something you know somebody else told you and gave you. Oh, no, you're fine. Right? So, if you want something new or you... That's the picture I love, everybody. That's it right there. That's the one. Hey, man, what you doing? That's my picture. Now, that's my daughter. <laughs> that picture's my daughter. Nope. <laughs> I wanted to. <laughs> but yes, everybody, that's the artwork that we saw that was uh, scrap. Uh, scrap. So, that's what it is. It's understanding that if the world is dying, to do what do you want to do better to make a difference? Like, right? Now, ladies. <laughs> So just write it down and just put it up here. Okay. I'm not going to say, no, that's mine. that's mine. That's mine. That's my dude. That's mine. I want to put the <laughs> Now, ladies, no, no, no. let me ask you a question no. while she's signing. This is the last one? Can I know? No. I'm from the hip-hop era. How old are you? 24. 24? Uh, how old are you? 20. Okay, see, I'm from, I'm from the hip-hop era. I'll take a picture of the hip-hop I started. Let's say this. What year did you graduate? From what? From high school. Thank you. Now, now, you write it all seven. All day long. Okay. So you are Thank the you are at the tail. You are, I graduated in ninth. So we're not that far from each other. But I also got to recognize hip hop when individuals were individuals. When biting was a sin. Right? Yeah. Nobody
nobody is looking to be an original, and I no, hate that. No, not right now. And I need originals, but not just originals in ignorance. I'm asking originals in motivating thoughts. Thank meaning, you. I understand the Nipsey Hustle now. Okay. I didn't get introduced to it until my children introduced it. Right. Right. What are he? What was he about? He transformed himself. I look at a Jay Z. We were better together, stronger together than we are individually. Oh yeah, by far. That's what the problem is. We haven't figured out that thing again. We got to do that. And hip hop back then used to talk about that. Unity. Unity. U N I T Y. Right. Or self destruction. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Love is gonna get you. We're talking yeah. about the root of evil, which is money and love and stuff versus love and people. Yeah. Where did that change? When did that change? Yes. It changed the Cash Money Records came in. Not only that. When the birth of hip hop, the birth of gangster rap. No, 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 no. Raunchy was different than what, what took place. When 92, 93 is when all the airwaves changed, right? It changed. 92, 93 is when it, when it went from, we didn't own the airwaves. This is the problem. We have no power. So what's bought and sold is the message that they want to give you. Uh -huh. So you go back and you look up look up x -Clan. Of course. Look up uh, Teach from, uh, from uh, oh my God. Look up Child Call Quest. Yeah. Teach is from... Um, you mean speech from Arrested Development? Yes, Arrested Development. Okay, yeah. so I, 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 you understand what it is. So, knowing that, where did that message get convoluted? The Cash Money Records came in in the early 2000s, I'm telling you. I know it. I, I, I'll say it got solidified then. Before that, I learned my gangster. It didn't come from Cash Money. My gangster came from NWA. Okay. My gangster came from. Schooly uh, D, PSK. You got to know what you mean. You know, yeah, so. My man. <laughs> Things to change on my side myself. I can't keep eating off the same plate. Right. A survival lifestyle is a chilling lifestyle, and I'm tired of it. So then let's transition because that brings me back to the ladies. She's in the book. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dreadlocks is a classic. I ain't reached out for you. If you can, go to Goza Table, get the book Culprit. That is a classic. Okay. I'm trying to turn that into a movie. Realistically, it's a classic. But um, in the 19, in the 1990s, it was prophesied that hip hop would go underground and that feminine energy would have to rise to bring hip hop back to prominence. And right now, within the past three to four years, females have been in the forefront of making hip hop a brand and a culture again where the male dominated voice always was in the forefront but abated by hatred that made it not serve the community or the culture. Being that you represent not only through your art, through your mind and creativity to change the society, what type of um, what type of responsibility do you have as an artist to be your best artist at all times? You wanna go first? Go ahead. Okay. Um, I think I just like issues and feelings and emotions. If anything, I do a lot of emotions, and when you see it, you feel very a certain way about it. So I don't, I don't have to say much about everything. Um, it kind of comes across, and I think, like we talked about earlier, you can spread your message long ways with just a picture. And over time, and in cultures and everything, they use art as a lot of propaganda and stuff. So if we can use that again to lift people. We really can, and I love that. Um, the thing I find with women is that they come together and they uplift each other. So I like seeing the women in the industry do the music thing. It seems like all of them pretty much get along and they lift each other up and collab with each other, which is what we do here. We work on things together. We like to collab. We like to lift people up. I like to do a lot of commission paintings, and that's fun because I get to see what everybody's interested in and what it means to them. When I do commissions, I see everybody wants their family members painted because that's what's close to them and that's what means the most to them. So. Minority on Heritage Chip Hop. Okay. Because we're not. We're only a minority here. Yeah, I was like, what that's do you mean the minority? No. Right. And that's, that's, we're the majority. So that's wiping out language a lot. That's what I tell them all the time. If you want 
understood what the population represented in the whole of the world. It's just who owns the power. It's a difference. We're, we're, we're at a we're at a subjugation. My word is subjugation. The issue is that somebody controls your food, your air, your water, your what you what they entitle or call freedom. And then we're not in a minority when we reach back and connect to our ancestors. That's important. Connecting to the lines that we lost. We don't know where we came from. So to write a story from a place be, be, of what we were before we became black, because that's a typo. That's and that's not what a, I like to do in my art. I like to show the positive sides of African American culture. I know I'm lighter skinned, but I love to do darker characters because they don't get the love that they need to. It's darker skin is associated in America. Yeah. It doesn't get where it came from. Well, how you got it? You didn't yeah. ask for it. Let's scale back. I just got finished having this conversation. Here's your truth. You live on a rock that floats a plate on space that nobody controls. And it sustains us. And somebody tells you that there's not enough on this planet to sustain us all. But they hoard things until you can have crumbs. Yeah. This is the identity of the world when it was conquered and subject. How do we break the bonds of subjugation on our mind and on our bodies? It's a lot of changes that have to occur. There's a lot of it that has to occur. And doing it through art is it, getting it, express themselves. Look, man, we live in a world. I, I was sitting at a table with dudes and they were talking. So I said, you believe girls should be paid less than a boy gets paid. So I, I should believe that all my daughters should be paid less than my son gets paid. Yep. Even though they put in all the good work. That I believe that. <laughs> He's going to fall down on his face. I don't believe that. Because I don't believe someone with your given talent should be working for anybody. Get your anybody. own thing. Don't, 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 don't. It's because if you work for somebody, they're going to give you what they're they think you, you deserve. Value. You should give what you deserve, right. which is be for yourself. And that's, a, again, it's a subjective value. And through it's built through subjugation. Exactly. So if you look at the whole model and why we have problems in the United States, they could get that work done for free. There was a whole collection of people that was hungry. These people got free. And these people still was looking for work. At the same time as you got free. They wanted to know that what little bit that they had, you couldn't take. And they had to hate you. And that's what somebody else gave you because they gave them crumbs to eat. Where do we fix that for everybody? Where now we have enough to sustain ourselves. Let her do what she needs to do to sustain herself. Or what do you need that you don't really need? You don't have that problem. We got this problem. It's an empire. It's, we're building our own empire. Shout out to the doctor in training. There she go. <laughs> And that's what I talked to her about. Because she wants to do medicine. Right. And I said, what's the number one thing that makes people sick? People. People. <laughs> so, yeah. until you can make people insurance and pay me to be around people, we always going to get sick. Right. Yeah. We are. But it's also too, uh, what you've been guided into, what you eat, where you go, how you bathe, all the things that we do here. All the, none of it is meant to make you better. It's always meant to make, in 74, Nixon changed legislation and caused everything that we have now. Nixon? Nixon. Go, go to 74 and look under Nixon. And what happens is the HMO, the business of business, of, of healthcare became business. If we, I give this example. If the man created the polio vaccine, we're alive now, we wouldn't be taking polio vaccine. No, they'd be rich. Yeah, right, but they'd be, we'd be taking polio pills. Yeah, and they'd be rich. Right. Because it wasn't for the greater good. Of course not. Right? It was Back then it was, now it's not for the greater good. And something about that has to change. If you look at the planet and understand things are horrible and we all, I'm not going to be here. Right? They are. Legacy. So, right. Right. so why can't I truly change the way we have our mold, the Moses moment? It's not something that I'm going to see, but my, their kids are going to see. We have to do that now. We have to. It's required of us as the older generations. Stop complaining about millennials. You raise them. Don't talk about no damn millennials. You're the ones that raise them. So if you feel as though they're selfish and unfit, and they can't live the same world that we live. I'm, I'm not even in the imagination. If you go four generations back, me as a man of color, I'm a massage therapist. I've been doing that for 15 years. Shout out to hands. <laughs> There would never be a thought of my great-great-grandfather, great-great-great-grandfather, that he would be in a 
different room with a white person alone doing massage. Yeah. We are we are things that they never would have even imagined. So how do we become things that, that we've never even imagined for the future? Let's ask them. What is the importance of imagination to making it come true? Everything that we do is five years. Was it five years? It can pass. Seven. And we get it a oh, seven years. We're, we're behind seven years of technology. My friend told me that he li he only lives in China. Yep. They, they, when we got the um, what's it H what H what was it H C C four K. When we got four K TV, they were on eight eight K already. What? And if you get a um a black magic camera, it shoots in six K already right now. So while everybody rushing to the you know everybody like get this camera in four K. And I ask questions like. What do I need to play 4K on my TV? You need a wire. How much is the wire? $200. I'm like, oh, no, I want that shit. Give me the regular TV. Then. It's not accessible. Or even movies. Like, think about it. That's creation. There is nobody out there that, I mean, you can replicate somebody's story, but everything that we do is from creation. This entire convention, you walk around these tables, this is all from the artist's mind. And creation and art is the fabric that makes life, that makes the imagination of life become the reality yes. of life. Yes. So I ask you this in part, and I ain't want to be too long. This is dope, though. <laughs> uh, I ain't want to be too long, but I want to ask you this. As an artist, because that's my man. Shout out to my man right there. All right, there you go. <laughs> As an artist, where would you like to see your work where it, it'll be like, I never imagined this could be here and you see it there? Who would like to see yours? So, I live in Delaware, but since I live so close, I love coming to Philly. When I come to Philly, I see huge murals. And I think that speaks to thousands, if not millions of people. And I would love to see my art displayed in the city where everybody can see it. And I don't need anything back from that. It's gratification from the people. So, okay. that's it. <laughs> that's dope. And I'm going to give you an idea when we're off camera because you're not stealing it. How about you? What would be your... I would love to see my art on TVs and, um, and you go into a comic store, see it there. It's just to see a character that you relate to. Like, you know that moment when you watch Black Panther and you were like, ooh, and you are like, look at all the people that look like me on this, this screen. That's what I want to know. Yes, sir. Anybody tell you like Pooch Hall? You look like the goof from the game, yo. Derwin. You don't? I don't know. All right, my bad. All right. I'll take you up on that. That's my show. So, for me, what I like to know is that I created an idea. Yes. That got used to make a future. I want kids to be able to pick up my book and read my book and make their lives better. Or, you know, I learned that in 2.5 acres you can make 7,000 pounds of food. That's true. Right? That's a fact. So, if I taught people that we got all these empty parks, we got all these old empty pools that exist, and that got defunded, all this empty land and parks, if I can write something that inspires people to start sharing and growing food so a mom doesn't have to ask a person that hates them for food, I've done my job. Shout out to you for that thought. The most important thing that people have to learn about life is that you don't only live once, you live every day, you only die once. Yes. So with the many days that you have, you have to make life better, fulfilling, and inspirational for those who come after you. This is one of the best interviews I did today, y'all. This is my extended family. So, Daddy, appreciate you. Sis, with the pleasure, sis, pleasure, Ma. Sis, you family too? That's my girlfriend. Okay, Auntie, it's all good. We are family. We family at Heritage Chip Hop. So thank you. Give everybody your Instagrams on how to follow you. I am Indigo X Art. And you can also find me at Indigo underscore Renee. I'm Renee. Yes. <laughs>
<laughs> you can find me at Raya Solar System, R Y A H, Raya, that's my first name. <laughs> you see, I can so true. <laughs> Lady lights, yo. Lady, you are a lady. Just back up. Okay, we go. Aim it down. That's how you can find me. There we go. So everybody out there, make sure you support my family. We gonna invite y'all to Jersey. Are y'all from Delaware? Yeah. Yeah. Y'all right, gotta come to Jersey and chill with me. Okay. Right. Heritage Hip Hop get right. you in the office, right. and I'll give you some more of them great ideas. Like I told you guys. That is amazing. Did you see that? I don't know why I bought that. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, we we're talking talk about Jersey. albums and, We're down. And, you know, some ideas. I, I got. I, there's a real cool hip hop album idea. Okay. Cool. So everybody out there, you want to say peace? Thank you. <laughs> and we out. Real, real.